Hey guys, welcome back to the Cinema 4D tutorial series on constraints. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the points constraint and how we can use it to assist with mechanical rigging. So let's start with something simple. So I'm just going to create a spline that we can work with. Now let's say that we wanted to be able to control and animate the position of the points on this spline. The way the spline is right now, you really can't do that. There's no way to make a keyframe for this point and then move its position and make another keyframe for it. So what we have to do is set up controller objects that will be attached to those points. That way we can control and animate the position of those controller objects. In this case, we can just use null objects. Now, unfortunately, Cinema 4D does not have a one-click solution to this. So I'm going to show you a couple of different methods that you can use if you want to attach null objects to the points on your spline. So the first method would be the spline IK tag. So we'll right click on the spline and go to character tags, IK spline. So the first thing that we need to do is drop the spline down into the spline link box there. We need to create some handles for it. So we're going to click on the handles tab and we need to click add four times. Now the reason why we're doing this four times is because there are four points. So however many points your spline has, that's how many times you're going to need to click on add. Now you'll notice that the object link boxes here are empty. So that means we need to create the null objects. So we can just click on create four times and that will create those null objects for us. Currently we can't see them. So what we need to do is select them all and just change the display over to something visible that we can see. So we'll go back to the tag and go back over to the tag tab. And for the end link box, what we need to do is just drag in one of those nulls. And now we can select the null and we should be able to move it and animate its position. All right, so another way that we could do this is with the MoGraph tracer. So we don't even need a spline for it this time. So I'm just going to delete all that. We can go up here and create the MoGraph tracer object. And we're going to need to create some null objects as well, which now that I think about it, I probably could have reused the ones we just had. So I will push that over and I'm just going to make a few copies of this null. And what we want to do is go to the tracer object and select all four of those nulls. And then we want to change the tracing mode to connect all objects. And now we should be able to just grab any null that we want and animate its position and the spline will follow. So those are a couple of ways that you can use when you want to attach nulls to the points on your spline. So now I'm going to show you how to do this using a constraint. Now, unfortunately, Cinema 4D does not have a one click constraint that you can use to do this. If I were to draw out a spline and I'll just draw out a quick spline again that we can use. We can go up here to character constraints and you can see there is a point constraint, but you can also see that it's currently grayed out along with all the other ones. So obviously this point constraint is not going to work the way that we want it. There's also a spline constraint, but that too doesn't seem to be working for this. Now we do have the option to right click on the spline and go to character tags constraint, but there's no option for point or spline. So the closest option available would be clamp, but you can see that this clamp option is rather limited and this is more for clamping an object to another object. It doesn't really work in the sense like we think where you want to constrain a null object to the point on a spline. If it did work that way there should be an option here to list the point indexing. That way we could control which point along the spline would be used to attach the null object to. So this option is not going to work. So now let's take a look at the CD Tools plugin. In the list of constraints, there's one called Add Points Constraint. 
I'm going to show you just how easy this is to use. So you want to make sure that you have all of the points selected. If there is a point that is not selected, that point will not get a null object. So we'll select all four of the points and we'll go up here and call up the command for the CD add points constraint. And just like that, it is set up and ready to go. And now all we have to do is animate the position of these null objects that were created for us. So how exactly would you use this constraint for mechanical rigging? Whenever I think of the points constraint, I tend to think of something along the lines of some type of hose or a cable that would be connected to a mechanical object. Now I don't want to give away too much right now because we're going to come back to this constraint and talk more about it in another lesson in this series. And I'm going to show you how to make some pretty cool stuff with it when you combine it with some other constraints. But for this lesson, I'll show you a little example of how you can use the points constraint for mechanical rigging. So we can just start with a new scene. So I will delete that. I'm going to go to a front view and I'm just going to draw out a spline, but I want to change the type over to cubic and I'll just draw a little shape like that, almost like a hose that's kind of hanging. All right, so I'm going to hit Control A to select all the points. I'm going to go up here and click on the Add Points constraint. I want to create a circle spline as well as a sweep nerb. Drop that in there as well as the spline. Now the circle spline is rather large at the moment, so we need to shrink that down. I think four will be okay. And if we change the shading mode over to lines, there is a lot of subdivisions in there. So I'm going to change the intermediate points on the circle spline over to uniform. And we'll take that down to about three or four. I'm also going to select the path spline and I'm going to change the intermediate points on that over to uniform. And we probably need to go up on that. So I will take that up to about 30. So what we want to do now is we want to make this hose dynamic. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. We can use some of the hair tags, which I think one of them is spline dynamic. So if we right click on the spline and go to hair tags, uh, we have constraint and we also have spline dynamics. Now that's one way that we could do it, but the CD tools plugin comes with a spring constraint. So what we need to do is first select the null object down here at the bottom. And then we need to shift select the one on the right, shift select the one on the left, and then call up the command for the CD add spring constraint. And you can see that the tag has been added to the middle null object. Now in order to see this in the viewport, we need to hit the play button. So I'm gonna hit play and let that play through. And I'm gonna grab the null over here on the right, and I'm just gonna start moving it around. And you can see that we already have a pretty nice looking hose here. So we could also play around with some of the properties in the tag. So I'll click on it and go over to forces. And I wanna take the mass up. And what that's gonna do is it's going to increase the mass of that null object weighing down on the center part there of the hose. Now we can get it to sag down quite a bit. And there we have our saggy hose. So this is one way that you could use the point constraint along with the spring constraint to make a dynamic hose that you could attach to some type of mechanical device that moves around. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. But don't worry, because we're going to come back in another part in this series and talk more about this constraint and how you can use it with some of the other ones to make some pretty cool stuff. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.